Good afternoon, everybody. If you could find your seat, the event's about to begin in about 10 minutes. That's all I'm about to say. That
Everyone, the program's about to begin. Now, please welcome to the stage House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, Sir Richard Branson, and U.S. Secretary of Transportation Elaine L. Chow. Good afternoon. Please rise and join me in singing the national anthem.
Good afternoon, everybody. Thank, thank you first to Adina Felton from FMCSA for that stirring rendition of the national anthem. And thanks to all of you for being here today. We are particularly grateful for our distinguished speakers to help us mark this milestone today. So thank you to the people that will be speaking, including Secretary Chow, Leader McCarthy, Sir Richard Branson, and pilots Mark Stuckey and C.J. Sturkow. My name is Jeff Rosen. I serve as Deputy Secretary of the U.S. Department of Transportation, and I have the privilege to work with Secretary Chow and countless dedicated public servants here at DOT. All of us have a crucial mission to make sure that our nation's people and economy move safely on our roads, our railways, our waterways, our pipelines, and in the air, and yes, in space. If you're looking for the next big thing, commercial space just might be it. This year, it seems that we continue to reach new achievements within an industry that sees no earthly bounds. Safely growing this aerospace sector is a priority for President Trump, for Vice President Pence, and for Secretary Chow who represents us on the President's National Space Council. With their leadership, we are seeing extraordinary progress. And that is why we are here today to celebrate an example of that tremendous progress and the spirit behind it. Courage, determination, and the vision to chart new courses. Somewhat like the early days of aviation, these commercial space flights take grit and innovation, the very attributes it takes to blaze a trail for people and generations to follow and to come. So without further delay, let us launch today's program. I'm going to start with the privilege and the honor to introduce House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy. Leader McCarthy represents the 23rd District of California He's also previously served as House Majority Whip and as House Majority Leader. And we are so pleased he can join us because much of the cutting edge work and testing in commercial space that is occurring is happening in his district. Leader McCarthy himself started a successful business at the ripe young age of 21. He knows all too well about entrepreneurial spirit and how common sense policies and in some situations, the absence of unnecessary or excessive regulation can make a real difference to prosperity and to economic growth. He has spoken regularly about the need to build confidence among innovators to hire, expand, invest, and grow in new, exciting, and developing economic segments in transportation and elsewhere. So please join me in welcoming Leader McCarthy. Good afternoon. Well, Secretary Chow, distinguished guests and fellow Americans, we gather today to celebrate Mark Forger Stuckey. He'll tell you how he got that nickname later. Frederick C.J. Sturkow, two pilots, two pioneers whose courage has rekindled our spirit for discovery. For the first time in nearly a decade, American astronauts traveled to space aboard American spacecraft, fittingly for a mission that signals a return to American exceptionalism. It was launched from the Mojave Desert. Mojave has a storied history of spurring individuals with the right stuff towards groundbreaking achievements. It was here Chuck Yeager broke the sound barrier in his experimental aircraft 72 years ago. Yeager showed us a fundamental truth about what it takes to accomplish great feats. One needs to have courage, confidence, curiosity, and grit. Today's recipients personify those characteristics and deserve the commercial astronaut wings they will receive shortly. These wings are a rare award, but then again, it takes a rare reservoir of fortitude to pilot a spacecraft. Only 200 individuals both of whom I should say also lifted off from Mojave have received this award 
and no one has received it since 2004. Because every space launch is a technological miracle, let me say a word about the spacecraft that carried these men beyond 50 miles above Earth's surface. It's called Spaceship Two Unity, and that name tells us a lot about the craft. Not only did it carry Spaceship Two Unity carry its pilots, it also carried the experimental NASA technology into orbit. Through this public-private partnership, NASA was able to test its next generation technology, laying the foundation for future achievements that have the potential to bring shared prosperity to our entire country. The cycle of innovation is why I have long supported private sector investment in commercial space exploration. As the author of the U.S. Commercial Space Launch Competitiveness Act, we have laid a solid foundation for encouraging robust investment and bringing dynamic competitiveness growth to the industry. Now, as we celebrate these two brave men, we must also pause to remember those who have made the ultimate sacrifice to help fulfill man's age-old longing to understand our place in the universe. On October 31, 2014, Spaceship Two Enterprise tragically suffered an in-flight breakup and crashed, killing Michael Allsbury. Pilot Peter Siebel was also seriously injured. Now, Allsbury rightfully deserves to be honored alongside our heroic explorers who made space exploration possible. His sacrifice should inspire gratitude and wonderment, a commitment to carry forward their legacy. Most importantly, it should remind us, as President Reagan told a grieving nation, after the Challenger crash, the future doesn't belong to the faint-hearted. It belongs to the brave. The story of all human progress is the struggle against all odds. It is also a story of bold, visionary leadership. And Virgin Galactic has that in spades. Richard Branson has pushed his company to great heights, inspired by his lifelong curiosity in space exploration. I want to personally thank Richard for his commitment to continue the spirit of Mojave by, bu by building new spacecraft there. We're very proud of the key role that your team in Mojave will play as your organization makes important new advancements. They will add new chapters to the desert's history of fulfilling cutting-edge innovation. Now, as we look towards future discoveries, we should think about how space exploration can help us rediscover what makes America great. We often look to the Apollo moon landing with pride because it highlighted how America can accomplish anything with determination, industrial might, and common spirit. Commercial space exploration shows America possesses the curiosity, the confidence, and the drive necessary to accomplish great things today. It shows we still possess qualities and conditions necessary for achieving new greatness. So I want to celebrate Mark and CJ on accepting and achieving the wings. Now I only hope there'll be thousands more to come that even you in this audience one day will be standing up here and how commercial space brings it so much closer to home where anybody in the future will be able to see and feel and journey to a place we only dreamed of a few years ago. Thank you. Thank you, Leader McCarthy. We appreciate those remarks. For our next speaker, we are pleased to have someone who truly brings to life an entrepreneurial spirit. He became an entrepreneur at a young age, having started his first business at age 16. And he kept going and going with countless new companies along the way. His career as a business magnate, investor, and author led to his placement on Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People in the World. And of course, among his many accomplishments, in 2004, he founded Virgin Galactic, the parent company of the American business whose spaceship program has operated out of Mojave, California to date. 
It is that company which is responsible for the VSS Unity and its December 13th, 2018 space flight. So without further introduction, please welcome Richard Branson. It's good to be here, everybody. It's good to be here, kids. <laughs> Just say yes. <laughs> anyway, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I, I can think I can say without fear of challenge that the cause of our celebrations today have been long awaited, much anticipated. Uh, so sincere thanks to you, Secretary Chow, for inviting and hosting us and your team for pulling together all the arrangements in such a short period of time. Uh, it's really much appreciated and we're truly honored to be here. What we're marking today is a moment of historical significance, a moment of inspiration, of optimism for the future. And at the beginning of this important year for space, a recognition of the great leadership role that the US government and its agencies still play in helping to open space for the benefit of humankind. Since Virgin Galactic's wonderful, historic first space flight on December the 13th last year, the first crewed space launch from US soil since the shuttle's final mission in 2011, I've allowed myself time to reflect a little on our journey to date, particularly in the context of the wider space industry. We have without doubt come a long way since the early days of the 21st century when the idea of new private companies designing, building and operating vehicles to put payload, let alone people into space, was often met with an indulgent or perhaps a sympathetic smile. Yes, the road for all of us has been challenging, but as we stand here at the start of 2019, it is self-evident that we are finally at the dawn of a new age of space exploration, which will see reusable space vehicles built and operated by commercially successful private companies transform lives in ways which we've, I think, yet to fully comprehend. The US should be proud that it continues to lead the world in the exploration of space, if helped a little bit by a guy from the UK. <laughs> uh, <laughs> In, in creating the conditions which have allowed this second space age to emerge and which will enable it to grow and to flourish in future years, led by a spirit of partnership between government and the private sector. Virgin Galactic's first space flight was, of course, a wonderful moment for the team and a testament to years, literally 14 years of hard work, skill and dedication. And I know we have teams around the world watching this live. So first of all, I just want to say thank you to all of you for helping make this possible. Our first space flight was one built on partnerships. We were able to carry scientific uh, payload for NASA. And we look forward to growing that partnership and contributing to the agency's exploration and science missions in the years to come. We also flew with the blessing of the FAA, an organization which has done so much to enable progress and innovation whilst prioritizing safety. I said after the flight on December the 13th, as I stood with our pilots, CJ and Forger, that when you set off on challenging and important adventures, exceptional people come forward to join the journey. People who are consistently by your side and on your side. People who share your dreams and people who help make them a reality. We're all truly standing on the shoulders of giants. Our pilots who are honoring here today are two of our incredibly brave, dedicated test pilots that make all of this possible. With these remarkable breakthroughs come adventure, skill, perseverance, and sometimes great sacrifice. CJ and Forger, on behalf of the entire team at Virgin Galactic, and on behalf of everyone else here, congratulations on receiving your astronaut wings. Thank you for taking our beautiful spaceship, VSS Unity, into space. So thank you again to Secretary Chow and the FAA. We could not be here without you. 
Your support has allowed us to pursue our dreams, which will ultimately underpin our commercial success, as together we democratize space to change the world for the better. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Richard. Now, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce the 18th U.S. Secretary of Transportation, Elaine Chao. As most folks know, this is her second time in a cabinet position. She was previously the Secretary of Labor and was the first Asian American woman appointed to a president's cabinet in American history. Secretary Chao has had a distinguished career in the public, private, and nonprofit sectors, but a long history in transportation. Early in her career, she worked on transportation issues at the White House. She then served as the Deputy Maritime Administrator here at DOT. She became Chair of the Federal Maritime Commission and then Deputy Secretary of the U.S. Tra Department of Transportation. And now, of course, she's our Secretary of Transportation. She's held a num number of other positions that are perhaps too lengthy if we want to get to the matters at hand. But, but I do want to say, she, when she was Deputy Secretary of Transportation, the Office of Commercial Space was part of the Office of the Secretary, and so she's had a very long experience and history with the issues we're talking about today. And um, I could go on, but I'm getting the signal not to. So, so we're, we're going to uh, uh, go right to hear from Secretary Chow. Thank you very much, Deputy Secretary Rosen. Uh, let me once again welcome Leader Kevin McCarthy, whose 23rd district includes China Lake and Edwards Air Force Base, as well as the Mojave Air and Space Port. So thank you so much, Leader McCarthy. And also, I think you deserve another round of applause. And Sir Richard Branson, we are so honored to have you here with us today. Sir Richard Branson is the founder of Virgin Galactic, which is helping to create new milestones in commercial space. And I also want to acknowledge the presence of the former FAA Administrator, Marian Blakey, who is here with us as well. And then I want to say a special few words to the young people in the front row. I want to welcome the students here today from the DC Middle School STEM program. Now, you've got to tell me, when you go to an event, do you get seats like this? I don't think so. These are the best seats in the whole building. And guess who's in them? You guys are. Because this is a very important program You've got a very special guest here who you usually only see on television. So I hope you enjoy today, listen, and also learn. Well, today we celebrate a commercial space milestone. It's the first successful commercial space flight since 2011 of a US-made vehicle launched from the United States with a US crew. After being carried aloft to nearly 40,000 feet, lead pilot Mark Stuckey and co-pilot Fred Frederick uh, Sturkow, uh, I don't, I'm kind of stumbling because that's not how they were introduced to me. They were introduced to me as Forger and CJ, so that's what I'm going to refer to them as. These brave co-pilots took the VSS Unity up into space, flew her back to Earth as a glider, a glider, and safely landed her. It was picture perfect. The VSS Unity's flight was a private sector commercial space effort. The ship was built in the United States by the ship, uh, Spaceship Company, a California company based at the Mojave Air and Spaceport. Virgin Galactic is the parent company. It is one of the several companies that are creating an era of innovation 
that historians may one day call the rocket renaissance. Private sector innovators have developed new technologies, including air launch systems, small networked satellite deployment, and reusable rockets, and they have driven down the cost of space access. Experts estimate that the cost to put satellites in geosynchronous orbit has fallen 20% over the last five years. Increased use of reusable rocket technology may contribute to even lower launch costs. So thanks to this innovation, our country has regained its position as number one with a record number of commercial space launches in 2017. The good news is that we went from 23 commercial launches in 2017 to 33 in 2018. Three launches have already taken place in 2019, can you imagine? And another 38 are on the planning calendar. Significantly, the flight of the VSS Unity is helping to put the United States back in the business of building and flying manned spacecraft. And we're just at the beginning of an exciting era in which commercial companies are going to work with the United States government to carry crews to the International Space Station. And the Department of Transportation is hard at work to enable innovation in this vital industry. We're in the process of overhauling the federal government's outdated and cumbersome commercial space licensing procedures. Now, some of the changes may include consolidation of launch and re-entry licensing and allowing a single license to apply to launches from multiple sites. The Department of Transportation will set robust safety objectives while giving commercial space operators freedom to develop the best designs and solutions to meet these standards. The department is also implementing new technology to more effectively manage the national airspace and to make launches and re-entries less disruptive to commercial aviation. In addition, we are working with the Department of Defense on the DARPA Launch Challenge, which will demonstrate the launch capabilities of smaller rockets. This innovation is generating demand for more launch sites. And so the department is already licensing 12 non-federal spaceports. Colorado became the most recent state to receive a license for its first site. And other potential spaceports are being considered for Alabama, Georgia, and Hawaii. These spaceports will become important economic hubs. The global space economy is now valued at nearly $400 billion a year and is expected to triple in value over the next seven years. Our country's innovative commercial space sector is positioned to win an impressive share of that growing market. And this sector will not only generate revenue, it will drive technological innovation, provide access to extraterrestrial sources of energy and raw materials, and create whole new industries. And that means creation of whole new job categories, such as commercial astronauts that some of our young people here may one day attain. And all of this, what is this all about? It brings us back to today's gathering. These astronaut wings celebrate so much more than technical achievement. As you have heard the other speakers say, they celebrate grit. Virgin Galactic displayed grit when it persevered despite delays and setbacks. And our two pilots served in the United States Marines 
they're tough. Where quit is not in the vocabulary, but grit certainly is. So co-pilot uh, Frederick Stur uh, Sturkow, he's not only a marine pilot, but a NASA astronaut. That's a real life NASA astronaut, kids. That's what they look like. See, tough, terrific. He flew on four space shuttle missions to the International Space Station. He's left Earth twice as a pilot and twice as a commander. He is one of only two people to visit the International Space Station four times. And Mark Stuckey, the lead pilot, has a story to tell as well. I'm going to say it again. He's flown almost everything from the SR-71 Blackbird to the Goodyear blimp. He joined NASA as a test pilot. And when its flight testing program wound down, he flew for commercial airliner. But he persisted in his dream to get to space and join Virgin Galactic. 14 years have passed since the very first commercial astronaut wings were awarded. And today, we award the first of what I hope will be many more commercial astronaut wings. And you are all here to witness this historic milestone. So I'm very pleased to be here today with all of you to award these two special heroes, these very special astronaut wings. Gentlemen, they are a testament to your skill, your professionalism, and to your persistence. You are true American patriots. These wings honor the determination of the entire team that designed, built, and supported the flight of the VSS Unity. So at this point, I'm going to ask Sir Richard and Leader McCarthy, won't you come join me in making these presentations? Thank you so much. <laughs> 30 seconds. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. That was really special. And uh, thank you, Secretary Chow. 
Uh, with the presentation of the wings, today's program has reached its destination. So let me thank all of you for joining us and recognizing this important milestone with your continued commitment, vision, and unwavering determination we can be assured of America's continued leadership in space now and in the years to come. So thanks everybody for joining us today.